In this video, I'm going to show you how to do example 1016, which is a pin change or pins that can change on a specific port. Uh, again, well, I think in the previous video I've said, if I can just show you the, um, the Proteus design, I've got here connected to PB0, to PB2, and to PB3. I've connected three switches on a Proteus design. And if uh, I want this program to operate like this, if any one of these pins change state, then this LED should be toggled from high to low or low to high, depending on what it was before the change on the pin. So if I go, um, in this case, it is definitely connected to port P B, because PB0, 2 and 3, it's port B. And we need to know if I can go back to the book of Nahimi, Nahimi and Mudzi on page 346, uh, table 10.3, we can then have a look at what should be the interrupt vector name. If I can just shift this a little bit. What is the vector interrupt name? So in this specific instance, it is a pin change interrupt request zero. So I make use of this PC int Un, in zero underscore vect. This is what the name is supposed to be uh, if there's a pin change interrupt request zero. So, uh, as I've said, this is the sketch. This is what it will be looking like. And uh, now we can go over to the program and have a look at what the program looks like. Again, this program was written, written in uh, Atmos Studio um, for the Atmega 328P. So, yes, and the, again, I need to include the interrupt.header file. In this specific program, I again just included a variable by the name of var. And in my main program, var is just loaded the whole time with 12. But again, this program here, uh, this, this statement can be replaced by a long program, the main program. Um, and whenever there's an interrupt, it will jump out of this main into the interrupt service routine. So let's look at what has happened here. Uh, the register DDRB, pin number five, is made a one, which is an output. Um, and if I do this with DDRB, this pin one, pin five, so rather, is a one, the rest of them will still be zeros, which means the rest of the pins will definitely be inputs. And this is why I don't need to uh, to make them inputs because if I start up at these inputs, all of them are inputs in any case. So if we do this, if I directly after I've initialized uh, that one pin to be an output and the rest to be inputs, um, I can go on port B. If I say port B is uh, pin zero is a one, pin two is a one, and bit, uh, bit, bit pin three is also a one, or bit number three is also a one. That means that the pull up resistances uh, were activated by using this one line here. So if we go to the pin change uh, interrupt control register, PCICR, and if I make in PCICR this specific uh, bit PCIE0, pin change interrupt enable 0, we've seen before that if I use 0, we are actually referring to port B. So if I do this, pour some the b some bits on the uh, on port B will be activated, or any change on certain bits in port B will activate an, uh, an interrupt. So we must just now specify in this uh, masking register here, pin change masking register, which pins are we talking about? And here I've specified that will be bit zero if there's a change on bit zero or but two, or but three, any one of those with a change will cause an interrupt. Like we've seen before, if, um, well, in, in the, let's be first just say here, this is how the I bit, or the bit called I, for interrupt in the S register, which is the status register. So we activate um, that specific bit, which means the global interrupt is enabled, and interrupts will now occur if there's a change on any one of these pins, PB0, 2, or 3. 
so I will go into this program and as I've said this is just a stupid program loading something 12 value 12 in var um, but at some point if any one of these bits change I will jump um, basically I will first of all jump to my interrupt table or interrupt vector address and from there I will be directed uh, this is happening automatically in C but I will then be directed to the interrupt uh, interrupt uh, function as I've said this is this is the name of that function this is where it must be like that and we will jump in here as soon as any one of these bits change condition it could be going from a high to a low or a low to a high it doesn't matter but if we jump out of this main program into this um, function interrupt service routine then we will just change bit number five of port b so this is toggling that specific bit only once so let's see what's going to happen when i apply this on i've already loaded this into my proteus design so let me just stop there so the condition as you can see uh, let me just start first of all you can see i haven't good i haven't connected any resistances to these uh, switches here and for, for if you look at this one pb2 for instance you'll see that it's high and pb3 is high because it's open circuits open here open there that means the internal resistance is activated this is why it's red meaning high and this one where the switch is closed this is why this ground is sitting on pb0 and making that one a low on this specific pin pb0 so as you can see the led at this stage is off if i go to my program uh, everything here was actually now set and i would be sitting loading 12 into var the whole time the moment that i close the switch i will jump to the interrupt service routine and the bit condition will be changed let's have a look so let's assume i close this this uh, the switch on pb2 here if i close it you can see that the led has now changed state um, in my program it would have run through this statement here and then go back to the main and carry on by loading this if there's another change i will jump into the interrupt service routine again and uh, the condition will again be toggled so let's assume i open this switch here for instance so there's a, just a change here on this pin but you can see the led has toggled again so and if i close this one again there's again a change and it goes high again if i close this one it will go low again etc so which whenever there's a change on the input uh, input pins there's uh, i will jump into the interrupt service routine and execute whatever sits in the interrupt service routine at this stage it is just uh, toggling pb5 and this is how you can then set up a port or pins in a port to activate an interrupt if there is a change on pins so normally what one would do is you could measure a specific on a let's say we use the whole port we can measure inputs on that port and if there's a change only then would we react on that change if, you, if there are no changes we just stay in the main program execute the main program but only when there's a change we will go into the interrupt service routine and this is how you set up then uh, port well pin changes on a specific port thank you